My name is Mary Bromley. I am a psychotherapist. I live in Springs and I have lived here for 35 years. I am a psychotherapist in private practice and I also work with the uh, East Hampton Town and Village Police Departments. I think that we have just been through a crisis that we have not even begun to realize how it's affected us. It's a moment in history that no one has ever really gone through. Almost two years of isolation and uh, incredible acts of courage and love and, uh, but also uh, intense fear. There was loss and also though, uh, for some people, the chance to leap over an ordinary life and be transformed in many ways. I probably worked harder that year, starting March 13th, than any time of my life. I was hit with adolescents who could not go to school, adults who were extremely anxious and fearful, and living in a, uh, an atmosphere that felt completely surreal. At the same time, two of my children and their uh, girlfriends came to live with us because they had to give up their apartments in Brooklyn. So in every way, uh, our lives changed. I mean, I just think everybody was drinking more, absolutely, uh, or smoking more weed or arguing with family more. Whatever drug was available was absolutely, in some cases, needed when we look at antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication. Uh, but people were uh, absolutely seeking uh, comfort in all kinds of unhealthy and unhealthy ways. Every morning I went on the elliptical and after I took an ice cold shower, <laughs> believe it or not, and then I actually did get dressed. Even though I was working from home, I was not one of the pajama people. I wore uh, professional clothing and then I got ready uh, for a full seven hours, eight hours of very hard work. I did do FaceTime to be able to see people and that worked. I didn't think it would work, but being able to have that connection uh, through visually was very important. I didn't stop seeing people. They didn't stop seeing me that connection remained, which was very important. It was different, but it remained. If someone were an artist, or if someone were a musician, or if someone was a teacher or a poet, I would make sure that they somehow kept that going, talking to one's husband about the day, uh, eating healthy food, exercise, uh, meditation, um, playing with one's child. And believe me, in a pandemic, uh, the idea of playing with your child is not uh, something that people were able to do easily. And I would say 15 minutes, get on the floor and play with your kid. You'll have a better day. Listen to opera have flowers, um, have beauty around you because we are in hell. And I never tried to uh, oppose that or say, everything's fine. No, everything sucks. Life is really hard right now. So whatever you can do to maintain beauty, to maintain connection, with your older kids who are living with you, do your best, give them space, 
be mindful of how you're talking to one another because this is all we have. Every police officer in the village of East Hampton, it's a mandatory requirement that they meet with me once a year. I call it a conversation. It is 100% confidential. And I ask them, how's your life going? What kinds of problems have you been responding to? How are you feeling? How is your marriage? How are your children? Are you drinking too much? Are you okay? After I have that conversation, I might refer that person on for further therapy, but that information goes nowhere. However, I am mandated if someone is homicidal or suicidal that I have to take care of them uh, with further intervention. There was a suicide here of a detective, a dearly beloved detective, and it hit everyone. Uh, they had no awareness that he was in trouble. So we began to think about this program um, maybe a week before that suicide. So he did not benefit from my help, uh, unfortunately. Uh, people have an idea that, oh, this is East Hampton. There are no problems here. It's the rich and the wealthy and they just, you know, they miss a tennis date. You know, why would the police have any problems here? Believe me, the police deal with incredible situations here. Uh, as anywhere else. I think the darkest moments for me were uh, dealing with adolescents who were uh, locked down and missing a year and a half or more of friendship, of dating, of uh, feeling uh, that wonderful, juicy moments of friendship and, and love for one another. Adolescents really need that kind of connection. And uh, they were only uh, communicating with one another through the internet. Teenagers lost valuable time and I felt so so badly for them isolated depressed suicidal frightened and alone so also with older people how do you help an older person who has physical problems has no uh, chance for sexuality or friendship or touch, to not be touched for a year and a half, even if it's just, you know, hugging a friend, uh, that loss of human contact. So uh, the young and the old really suffered. I'd say discipline because I could not abandon my patients or my family or my spiritual growth or my body. I had to be disciplined in a way that uh, kept me healthy and kept me available for the hardest work of my life. 